stars don't move like that. Okay, what the hell was that? Oh my god, there are UFOs. Hundreds of residents are reporting strange lights in the skies of Brown Mountain, North Carolina. Look at this shit. What the fuck? This is why they want us to stay in the house. This is why the fuck they want us to stay in the fucking house, nigga. It ain't the coronavirus, nigga. It ain't the radiation, nigga. It's this. What the fuck is this? What is this? What is that? What is this? Hold on. What is this? What is, what is this? What is that? What is this? What is this in the sky right now? What's going on? They're not, they not airplanes. They doing formations and shit. Like, what's going on? For real, for real. Somebody please explain to me, man. What's going on, man? Like, this shit crazy right now. What the fuck? Behold, the eyes of the Lord God are upon the sinful kingdom, and I will destroy it from off the face of the earth, saving that. I will not utterly destroy the house of Jacob, saith the Lord. But thus hath the Lord spoken unto me, like as the lion and the young lion roaring on his prey, when a multitude of shepherds is called forth against him, he will not be afraid of their voice, nor base himself for the noise of them. So shall the Lord of hosts come down to fight for Mount Zion, and for the hill thereof. As birds flying, so will the Lord of hosts defend Jerusalem. Defending also, he will deliver it, and passing over, he will preserve it. Behold, he cometh with clouds, and every eye shall see him also which pierced him, and all kindreds of the earth shall wail because of him, even so. Amen. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the ending, saith the Lord, which is and which was, and which is to come, the Almighty. And I saw heaven opened, and behold a white horse, and he that sat upon him was called Faithful and True. Righteousness, he doth judge and make war. His eyes were as a flame of fire, and on his head were many crowns, and he had a name written that no man knew but he himself. And he was clothed with a vesture dipped in blood, and his name is called the Word of God. And the armies which were in heaven followed him upon white horses, clothed in fine linen, white and green. And out of his mouth goeth a sharp sword, that with it he should smite the nations, and he shall rule them with a rod of iron. And he treadeth the winepress of the fierceness and wrath of Almighty God. And he hath on his vesture and on his thigh a name written, King of Kings and Lord of Lords. The chariots, a sign of his coming. Shalom, shalom. I want to give all praise, all honor, and all glory to Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahashim Rakakwadash. I want to give double honors to our apostles and elders of Great Millstone. Peace and blessing and many salutations to you, elect Akim, across the four winds of this earth, pushing this word in sincerity and in truth. This is the book of Sirach, chapter 35, verse 6. Show new signs and make other strange wonders. Glorify thy hand and thy right arm, that they may set forth thy wonder, thy, thy wondrous works. Okay. Now this lesson here. As I stated earlier, it's going to be titled The Chariots, a sign of his coming. All right. And the reason why you see or why you have, so to speak, so many chariot sightings is because Yahweh Shai is getting ready to make his grand appearance with the angels very soon. All right. And those that dwell within those chariots, all right, those orbs of light that you see skating across the sky, those vehicles. OK, you have the angels that dwell within those chariots and they control them. And as you see these chariots, as you see recordings of these chariots, what they're doing is they're fulfilling the will of the heavenly father. All right. They're moving to and fro throughout the earth, 
causing particular things like uproars. All right. Give a particular individuals, the servants, um, the gospel and such. OK, the angels have all various jobs that they do. OK, but they soar along the skies in those chariots. OK, and they're pleased to do the will of the heavenly father. OK, that leads me to this precept actually here. Bear with me one sec, Baba Kishaw. It leads me to this precept here in the book of, uh, I believe it's in Psalms chapter 110. Let's see. My computer's acting a little slow. Be patient, please. All right, Psalms 110. I believe it's 110.6. No, no, no. Hold on. Salaki, it's in Psalms 103. Okay, so this is the book of Psalms, chapter 103, starting at verse uh, 19. It says, The Lord hath prepared his throne in the heavens, and his kingdom ruleth over all. Bless Yahweh, ye his angels that excel in strength, that do his commandments, hearkening unto the voice of his word. Bless ye Yahweh, all ye his hosts, ye ministers that do his pleasure. OK, so how do we know that these chariots all right, are a sign of his angels? How do we know this represents his angels? Now, when you read this here in the book of Psalms, chapter 68, verse 17, what does it say? It says the chariots of the most high are 20,000, even thousands of angels. The Lord is among them as in Sinai in the holy place. OK, so. In these chariots, all right, that skate across the sky, that move across the sky, you have angels that are within those chariots. Right here in Psalm 68 and 17, it says even thousands of thousands. OK, and when you look at these chariots, when you see all these sightings of these chariots, all right, mind you, there have never been as many chariot sightings ever until right now. All right. And this even to the point where the Heavenly Father is allowing these chariot sightings to be placed in the news. OK. And ultimately what this represents is a sign of our salvation. All right. This is a sign that our Lord is getting ready to come back soon and deliver us. OK. Psalm 68 and 18. Thou has ascended on high. Thou has led captivity captive. Thou has received gifts of men. Yea, for the rebellious also that the Lord power might dwell among them. Blessed be the Lord who daily loadeth us with benefits, even the God of our salvation, Salah. He that is our God is the God of salvation, and unto the Most High the Lord belongeth the issues from death. Okay, so when you see these chariots in the sky, this is a sign of our salvation. This is a sign of our deliverance. Okay, this is what the elect is going to get beamed up, beamed up in in the latter days as that, as that destruction gets brought on Babylon, okay? The saints are gonna get beamed up into those chariots and that's how we're gonna see the smoke of Babylon's burning as we look out of that sea of glass, okay? When you read it in the book of Revelation, the 15th chapter, matter of fact, I'll get that real quick. When you read this in Revelation, the 15th chapter, and it goes into that sea of glass, Revelation 15 and 1. It says, and I saw another sign in heaven, great and marvelous, seven angels having the seven last plagues, for in them is filled up in the wrath of the Most High. All right, and the chariots are going to bring the destruction on top of the nuclear missiles, but the chariots are going to bring fire upon the earth on top of the fire that's already going to be kindled in the earth. And it's going to be led by Yahweh Shai, who is the head of the whole host in heaven under Yahweh, his father. OK, verse two says, and I saw as it were a sea of glass mingled with fire and then that had gotten the victory over the beast. OK, so as he's explaining, he's explaining he as he's looking through a, a sea of glass mingled with fire. So that's a window. OK, that's a window that he was looking through. And as he's looking through this window, which is likened unto a sea of glass in this chariot, it says, and then that had gotten the victory over the beast. And over his image and over his mark and over the number of his name, stand on the sea of glass, having the heart of the most high. 
Okay, so as we're within that chariot, Lord willing, with those men looking through that sea of glass, we see the destruction, all right, of Mystery Babylon. We see the judgment that was given unto the great whore. Okay, now let's read this here in Isaiah 26. This is the book of Isaiah, chapter 26, in verse 20. It says, Come, my people, enter thou into thy chambers. All right, and this is also a precept as you read it in the book of Revelation, the 18th chapter, when it says, come out of her, my people. OK, that's us being called in that chariot. OK, it says, come, my people, enter thou into thy chambers and shut thy doors about thee. Hide thyself, as it were, for a little moment until the indignation be overpassed. And what's the indignation? That's the fire and judgment that the Lord is going to bring to Babylon and also different parts of the earth. OK, and how are we going to be able to see this indignation? We're going to see the indignation through that sea of glass that we read in Revelation, the 15th chapter. All right. Looking at the judgment of the whore, the judgment of the beast. OK. Verse 21 says, for behold, the Lord cometh out of his place to punish the inhabitants of the earth for their iniquity. The earth also shall disclose her blood and shall no more cover her slain. So this judgment is going to happen on the earth. And the chief part of that judgment happening on the earth is going to be in the mystery Babylon, which, according to the scriptures, through prophecy is America. All right. The place which is spiritually called Sodom and spiritually called Egypt. OK, this is the judgment that's going to take place. All right. And and as those ICBM intercontinental ballistic missiles hit this place. All right. In the midst of that. You're going to have the chariots. OK, which the scriptures say in Psalms, the 68th chapter. Thousands of them, they're going to come and they're going to bring judgment and dread upon the planet Earth. OK, and as we see these chariots in the sky, as we see them zip through the sky, as we see videos of them, all right, stream on YouTube and different streaming devices. This is a sign of the deliverance. All right. This is a sign of the deliverance of our people. This is the sign of Yahweh Shai making his coming on the planet Earth. And it's also a sign of. Of destruction that's getting ready to come okay even before Yahweh Shai came on the scene all right when, the, when those wise men that saw that chariot in the sky they knew that that was a sign that the Messiah was placed on the planet earth and that was a sign that's why I wanted to start off on um Sirach chapter 35 verse 6 where it says show new signs matter of fact I'll read this again but it says in Sirach 35 and 6, show new signs and make other strange wonders. Are not the chariots a strange wonder? Are not the chariots a sign? All right. And that chariot, again, when you see those chariots, it is a sign of our deliverance. And it is a sign of the destruction of our enemy. OK, it says glorify thy right hand and thy right arm. Now, who sits at the right hand side of the most high? Yahweh Shai. Now, you have certain scriptures for those Old Testament guys that say, you know, I am the Lord and there is none else beside me. But they don't understand that there is a heavenly host that's up there in the heavens. OK, and they all make up the body of the father. OK, so when you go into that scripture where it says there is none else beside me, that means there is nobody else that rules with Yahweh. He stands alone in rulership and power, but he does have a host. He does have a host of angels that perform his will. And Yahweh Shai is the chief angel. He is considered his right hand. OK, so it doesn't mean that he sits in the same level as the father. Absolutely not. OK, and that's all that means when it says there is no one else that sits beside me. That means there's nobody else equivalent in power and might of Yahweh. OK, but you do have a heavenly host in the heavens and they perform his will. OK, the king doesn't get off his throne. He sends servants to execute his judgment. All right. And Yahweh Shai just so happens to be his right hand. All right. And through that host. All right. That's how those works are done on the planet Earth. That's how those wondrous works are done, as the scriptures say. OK, verse seven says, raise up indignation and pour out wrath. Take away the adversity and destroy the enemy. All right. And that's what the Lord is going to do when he sends his chariots here. I keep saying it and I'm going to say it again. All right. When we see these signs in the heavens, when we see these chariots, that is a sign of our deliverance. And that is a sign of the destruction of our enemy. 
Okay, and when you go into the example, and I'm going to get it here in the book of Matthew, the second chapter. All right, King Herod, who was an Edomite, all right, he came in the line of Antipater. He understood that that was a sign, all right, of Israel's salvation. And he understood that that was also a sign of the destruction of the heathen. Okay, that's why he went on that campaign on killing those children when that report was given unto him of that of that star that was seen in the heavens. And by the way, that wasn't no star that was in the heavens. That was actually a chariot. OK, and I'm going to actually go to this example here in the book of Matthew, the second chapter. All right. And it reads now when Yahweh was born in Bethlehem of Judah in the days of Herod, the king, behold, there came wise men from the east to Jerusalem, saying, where is he that is born king of the Jews? OK, for we have seen his star in the east and are come to worship him. OK, now, when you read this here, you would think that it was just a, a regular star that was in the sky toward the east. Right. But when you continue to read, which I'm going to do, it's going to further show that that star wasn't an actual star, but that star was a chariot. OK, matter of fact, Salakia, <laughs> before I continue to read this here, I'm going to find this scripture here in the book of Job. Let me see here. I believe it's in Job. Let's see here. Bear with me one sec. This is Job 38 and 7. When the morning stars sang together and all the sons of God shouted for joy. OK, and the sons of God are the angels. OK, now we are the sons of God as well, but we also are the angels that have left our original habitation and we've been put into these chains of darkness. But right here, he's likening these angels to these morning stars. OK, now that, that doesn't mean when you look in the sky and you see stars, they're angels. No, mm -mm. that's not what that's going into. But when you look in the sky and you see those chariots moving, those orbs of light moving. All right. You know, they, they look like stars. OK, but the difference is they're moving and some of them sit in the sky and they and they flicker different colors. All right. And they change colors or they just disappear in the air. OK. And again, these are these are indicators which shows us that these are the chariots. These are the angels that are up there in the heavens. OK. For brothers that that see chariots that have seen chariots, you know what I'm talking about. OK. So let's jump back to this here in the book of Matthew, chapter two. And let's continue on. So Matthew two and three says when Herod the king had heard these things, he was troubled and all Jerusalem with them. And when he had gathered all the chief priests and the scribes of the people together, he demanded of them where Hamashiach should be born or the anointed. And they said unto him in Bethlehem of Judea, for thus it is written by the prophet. And thou Bethlehem in the land of Judah are not the least among the princes of Judah. For out of thee shall come a governor that shall rule thy people Israel. OK, and he's alluding to what the prophet Isaiah said in Isaiah, the ninth chapter. So King Herod went to the scribes and the Pharisees, the chief priests, all right, to understand where this Messiah was going to be born because his objective was to kill him. OK, because, again, Herod was an Edomite that it came out of the line of Antipater. But Her Herod was also um, he acted as a puppet ruler unto the Jews. All right, because he was in subject under the Roman Empire. OK, which, again, the Roman Empire around that time was ran by Edomites. OK. And you had those wicked scribes and Pharisees that was doing the will of those Roman, those Roman Edomites. Thus, Yahweh I said in John 8 and 44, ye are of your father, the devil. OK, because they were following under the same ways. They were in the same like mind of those Romans that were in power. OK. Now, when you continue to read here in uh, verse seven in Matthew two, it says, then Herod, when he had privily called the wise men, inquired of them diligently what time the star appeared. OK, so it said what time the star appeared. Now, anybody would think, OK, well, it says what well, that just means that the, the, the night fell and there was a star that appeared in the sky. But no, that's not what it's talking about. OK, this star literally appeared in the sky. This chariot appeared in the sky. Verse eight. And he said, Salakia. And he sent them to Bethlehem and said, go and search diligently for the young child. 
And when he had found him, bring me word again that I may come and worship him also. OK, so this is Herod, the fox who he was. All right. Lying, saying that he was going to worship him. But his true agenda was to kill him. OK. Matthew two and nine says when they had heard the king, they departed and lo, the star. Check this out. The star which they saw in the east went before them till it came and stood over where the young child was. So this chariot went from the east and moved throughout the sky and it hovered over that manger where Yahweh was born. OK, so we obviously see that this wasn't any normal star. OK, and as I read earlier in the book of Job, the 38th chapter, it had likened the angels. All right. To stars, to morning stars. OK, to these stars in the heavens. Again, that doesn't mean that the stars that you see in the sky are angels, but you do have the chariots that are up there disguised as those stars. OK, and this particular chariot hovered and moved from the east and hovered over above to where that where that manger was. Where Yahweh was born. OK, and verse 10 says, when they saw the star, they rejoiced with exceeding great joy because they bore witness to a chariot. All right. They knew that that was an angel that was in there. And that was a sign that the Messiah was born. That was a sign that Yahweh was born. And what those men did were they gave him gifts. All right. Verse 11 says and when they were come up to the house, they saw the young child with Mary, his mother, and fell down and worshiped him. And when they had opened their treasure, they presented unto him gifts, gold and frankincense and myrrh. OK, and frankincense was uh, an incense that was used in the temple. All right. And gold is what a lot of those honorable vessels in the temple was made out of. And myrrh, myrrh is one of the best smelling um, spices you could smell ever. All right. Myrrh was actually King Solomon's favorite spice which is the spirit that they had given him myrrh, because if you can receive it, all right, Yahweh was Solomon. All right, that was King Solomon returning back to the earth. Okay. Now, um, I wanted to bring that point out going into that star in the heaven, because that star in the heaven of that chariot was a sign that Yahweh had visited the earth. Okay. Now, again, going into the title of this particular lesson here, that's why I wanted the title of the chariots, a sign of his coming. OK, so as that chariot had appeared in the sky, as Yahweh Shai was brought to the earth for the first go around, it ain't no different with Yahweh Shai's second go around. That's why all these chariot sightings are seen in the skies in an epic fashion. They're recorded everywhere, man, because this is a sign that Yahweh Shai is getting ready to make his second coming on the planet Earth. OK, and Yahweh Shai is getting ready to deliver, deliver his brethren, deliver his kindred. All right. And he's also going to bring wrath and judgment unto the heathen. All right. He's going to bring wrath and judgment unto the heathen, those that oppressed his brethren, his kindred. All right. That's why I wanted to bring up the point earlier in Matthew 2. All right. When that star appeared in the, in the sky, they knew that that was a sign of salvation. OK, but Herod knew that that was a sign of destruction of the heathen. That was a sign that the heathen weren't going to rule too much longer. OK, so I want to go to this verse here in Zechariah, the fifth chapter. And this is the book of Zechariah, chapter five, verse one. OK, and it says, then I turned and lifted up my eyes and looked and behold, a flying roll. All right. And that flying roll is a chariot. OK. And he said unto me, what seest thou? And this is a conversation that the prophet Zechariah is having with an angel. OK, so the angel is asking him a rhetorical question because the angel already knew what it was. All right. Just as Ezekiel, when you read it in Ezekiel, the first chapter, OK, when he's seen that chariot in the sky, he saw those angels. All right. That were controlling that chariot. All right. The angels were controlling those chariots and having them move, move back and forth, move up and down. All right. So it's really no different here in Zechariah, the fifth chapter. OK, so this is Zechariah, chapter five, verse two. And he said unto me, what seest thou? And I answered, I see a flying roll. The length thereof is 20 cubits and the breadth thereof is 10 cubits. Then said he unto me, this is the curse that goeth forth over the face of the whole earth. 
For everyone that stealeth shall be cut off as on the side according to it. And everyone that sweareth shall be cut off on that side according to it. Okay, and who are the main ones that have stolen lands, that rape people, that have stolen identities? You have Edomites, who are the so-called white men. All right, so when you see these chariots in the sky, this is a sign of the destruction of our enemy to those that steal. Like Herod, for an example, when he knew that chariot had appeared, all right, in the sky, he knew that that was a sign to his destruction. Okay, Herod was a, was a thief. Okay, Herod was also called a fox by John the Baptist. And, and once somebody's called a fox, that means that's another name for a thief. Okay, because when you go into foxes, foxes are known for stealing eggs from nests. All right, and they'll creep in and do it. All right, a fox isn't going to just, just going to just come and destroy. Okay, usually when a fox steals, steals eggs, it waits for the parents to leave and then it creeps in and it steals it. Now, I'm not saying that's the only reason why Herod was called a fox, okay? But when you look at a fox, a fox is a thief. It's sly. It's, it's um, subtle, okay? And that was a, a byword, all right, or a, how should I put this? A curse word that was given unto, um, excuse my French, but a whole-ass nigga, all right, or a whole-ass individual or a conniving person, okay? So it ain't no different with these Edomites that you see out here. OK, they're thieves, they're foxes. OK, when you continue to read this here in Zechariah five and four, it says, I will bring it forth, saith the Lord of hosts, and it shall enter into the house of the thief and unto the house of him that sweareth falsely by my name. It shall remain in the midst of the house and it shall consume it with the timber, therefore, and the stones thereof. OK, so these chariots are a sign of destruction unto our enemies and best believe that's what the chariots are going to do all right on top of the missiles that are going to come all right on top of the fire that's already kindled the chariots are going to come and they're going to bring even more fire and dread on the planet earth in the midst of israel being saved okay now i'm going to bring this out in the book of habakkuk the third chapter and i'm going to end this lesson off in luke 21 so this is the book of Habakkuk, chapter three. And when you read this chapter, uh, it's a very um, beautiful chapter because it goes into the destruction of the heathen. It goes into the destruction of the thief. OK, matter of fact, just to be fair, I'm going to start off in Habakkuk two and ten. And then I'm going to jump to the third chapter because Habakkuk, the second chapter goes, it, it points out the thief. All right. It points out who this individual is. That went on to steal. All right. As we read earlier in Zechariah, the fifth chapter. OK, so this is Habakkuk 2 and 10. Matter of fact. Um, yeah, I'm going to start at verse nine. Habakkuk 2 and 9 says, woe to him that coveteth an evil covetousness to his house that he may set his nest on high. Now, who is this talking about? This has to be talking about the Edomites. OK. And how do we know that? When you read the book of Obadiah, it goes into Edom and it goes into how Edom made his nest amongst the stars. OK, so this is a sign or this is a, a or this is a, a symbol which goes to show you that this is talking about the Edomites, who is the so-called white man, according to the scriptures. All right. I mean, really, when you just look at the so-called white man's M.O., look how he got America. All right. He got it off of thievery, treachery, murder, lies, deceit. And he goes on and takes different identities and puts them on himself. He's not the original Roman. He's not the original Greek. He's not the original Jew. OK, but he places that MO on himself because he is a fugitive. OK, and what a fugitive or what a fugitive is, is pretty much somebody that's on the run. And he's a vagabond and a vagabond is a traveler. So he's taking on all these identities. All right. And he's hiding his true self. And one way that he does that is taking on these different characteristics of other nations that had actually inhabited particular lands. OK. And this is all set up through prophecy at the end of the day. But now the Heavenly Father has us in the position where we're pointing him out. And not even it's not even us that's pointing him out. But you have the whole world, all the other nations that's pointing a finger out. OK. As you read the prophecy in Isaiah 25 and 7 about that covering cast being removed. OK, 
When you continue, it says in Habakkuk 2 and 9, Woe to him that coveteth an evil covetousness to his house, that he may set his nest on high, that he may be delivered out of the power of evil. Okay, and you, he has um, a space force that he actually created, all right, because he believes that that space force can defeat those angels that are up there in the heavens. Okay, so he, he feels like he's safe with this space force that he created. All right. Well, ultimately, it's just going to be a sign of his dread. OK. And that's a sign that he believes he's the most high because he wants to be in the midst of the holy angels. OK. Verse 10 says, thou hast consulted shame to thy house by cutting off many people and thou hast sinned against thy soul. OK. And what does sin mean? Sin means. All right. Sin means to transgress. All right. The laws of the heavenly father. Now, were the laws given to Esau? No. OK. But Esau was. One who wanted to declare the statutes of the Heavenly Father when he had sat in his rulership. OK, you uh, or not. You remember what you actually can read in the Josephus. All right. When Alexander was in power, because Alexander, when he was ruling, that was the start of the rise of the Edomites. But you can read it in the Josephus as Alexander had went into Jerusalem. All right. He went into the temple and he offered up sacrifice. OK, so that was a man. OK, that wanted to proclaim himself to be a priest and a king. OK, so now he's going to have to fall. All right. He's going to have to fall by the sins because he claimed himself to be a servant of the Heavenly Father. OK, and when you look at the rise of America, America was so-called built off biblical principles, but they failed immediately. All right. They failed in every type of way. All right. That's why it's written in Psalms 50 and 6. What has thou done? To declare thy statutes. Okay. So verse 11 says. For the stone shall cry out of the wall. And the beam out of the timber shall answer it. Alright. Just as it was read earlier in the book of Zechariah. The fifth chapter. Okay. Verse 12 says. Woe to him that buildeth a town with blood. And establish a city by iniquity. Okay. And Esau is going to get judged by the law. By the way. Because you can go to Numbers 35 and 33. And it goes into a judgment of the individual that builds a town off blood. And it says the only way that that land could be cleansed is by the blood of him that shed it. All right. And all, and how that's going to happen is going to be through fire. OK. And again, it's not only going to be the nuclear missiles that's going to bring that fire, but it's going to be the chariot to the heavenly father. As I read earlier in Psalm 68 and 17, it goes into the chariots and how those chariots are thousands. OK. It says they're 20,000. And then when you continue, it says in Psalm 68 and 21, but the most high shall wound the head of his enemies and the hairy scalp as such as be that goeth still in his trespass. OK, and who is this hairy scalp? Who is this talking about? It's talking about the hairy man. All right. As you read in Genesis 25, the child that came out hairy and his name was called Esau. It's talking about him. All right. So when you jump back to the book of Habakkuk, and now I'm going to go to the third chapter, because, again, this is going into the chariots. OK, this is going into the angels. This is the book of Habakkuk, chapter three. And now this is going into the judgment of our enemies. OK. <sighs> Habakkuk three and eight. Was the Lord displeased against the rivers? Was thy anger against the rivers? Was thy wrath against the sea that thou didst ride upon thine horses and thy chariots of salvation? OK, and what's this going into it means that when these chariots come, it's going to be so much. Um, what's the word that I can use that fits this? It's going to be so much drama on the planet Earth. Well, I'm going to rather say it like this. When the chariots come on top of the nukes, it's going to be catastrophic events that's going to take place on the Earth. And it's going to be so catastrophic. The rivers are going to be are going to be misplaced. The waters in the Earth are going to be misplaced. OK, hey, the scriptures say. The earth shall reel to and fro like a drunkard. OK, and when you have all those missiles hitting the earth, the earth is going to shake. All right. And even on top of those missiles, when the chariots come, the earth is going to shake in a macroscopic level, man. OK, as you read about that account, when Yahweh Shai had risen from the dead. All right. When that angel came and spoke to that woman, when spoke to Mary, it said there was an earthquake that happened, man. So just imagine thousands on top of thousands on top of thousands of angels and chariots 
that enter into the, into the earth's atmosphere. Okay? It's going to cause the earth to shake. It's going to cause the earth to tremble. Okay? Verse 9 says, Thy bow was made quite naked according to the oaths of the tribes. Even the word Selah, thou didst cleave the earth with rivers. Okay? And what, where can you find that oath of the tribes? You can find that when that covenant was given unto Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. All right? And part of that covenant was that the enemies that had cursed us were going to be cursed. All right? When you read about it, it says, Cursed be that curseth thee. Okay? So when we see these chariots in the sky, man, that's a sign of the curse that goeth forth over the whole earth. But that is also a sign of our salvation. That is a sign of the oath that was given unto the tribes. All right? That Israel was going to rule on the planet earth. All right? And I'm going to end this lesson off here in the book of Luke chapter 21, verse 28. Okay? Because as that star, as that chariot had appeared in the east, all right, and those men seen it, okay, that was a sign of salvation unto us, and that was a sign of destruction unto the heathen, man. And as they looked in the sky and they was able to see that as a sign, we do that the same when we see the chariots in the sky, when we see them moving, when we see the signs on our earth. We know that this is a sign of our salvation, okay? So this is the book of Luke chapter 21, and I'm going to start at verse... Um, 27 it says and then shall they see the son of man coming in a cloud hold on it says in a cloud right does that mean that he's going to appear uh, like goku on a nimbus cloud no those clouds are synonymous for the chariots man okay those clouds are synonymous for the chariots okay and just to prove that one sec i just i just want to prove that going into the clouds how they're um those are signs of the chariots okay so like, I know I said I was going to end it off on that one, but hey, you know, we, we bring out points. All right. We bring out points on what we say. OK, I'm going to find that in Psalms. Hold on. This is Psalms 104 and three. Who layeth the beams of his chambers in the waters? Who maketh the clouds his chariot? Whom walketh upon the wings of the wind. Okay? So those that cloud that he's talking about is a sign, all right, or is a representation of his chariots. Okay? That's what that goes into. And there's even videos, there's plenty of videos that you can look up for yourself that shows you that when you see those chariots at night, they always go back into the clouds. All right? There's times that I actually use the clouds as a cloaking device to hide that ship. Okay? Hey, you had the, the big bro Kuala that did a lesson some months back, all right, and it was actually a, a satellite or a space station, and they was looking down, and it was in space. It looked like a floating cloud in space, but as it got closer to the ship, you could actually see that it was an actual spaceship. It was an actual chariot, man, you know, but I want to jump back to Luke 20 and 28. I just wanted to bring that point, but this is Luke 21 and 27. And then shall they see the son of man coming in a cloud or a chariot with power and great glory. And when these things begin to come to pass, then look up and lift up your heads for your redemption. Draw it nigh. All right. And what does he mean? Look up when you look up. What do you see? All right. You might not see it every time. OK, but they're there. But the chariots are always in the heavens. And there's times when the Lord can surprise you. All right. And he'll just have a chariot appear and move across the sky. OK, now he doesn't have to do that to show his glory. OK, because they're out there regardless, man. OK, they're out there regardless. As you there's a particular lady, I don't know her name, but she actually does plenty of YouTube videos goes in going in to the to the ships and how they appear in the heavens. We can zoom up on these. A tad bit and I don't mind. I like to get on here every once in a while. And there's so many ships when there's so many clustered together, layered upon themselves um, it's hard to get super super clear images when you're trying to get them all at the same time but you can look over here and see that these ships are real and they are they're absolutely so real um, let's look at the next picture I just want to boom it takes a while for it to focus and again you can see the notches in them right here and um, you can see you know um, 
You can see them better in here, and I'm not the best at explaining, but that's okay. I'm just presenting uh, the pictures for you all to see yourself. I am. Uh... Okay, as you've seen in that clip earlier. All right, but this is a sign of our redemption. This is a sign of, of our salvation, man. All right, as those three wise men saw that star in the east, okay, move over from the east to where Yahweh was born, that, they knew that that was a sign of the redemption of Israel, okay? And the same is in like manner with us. When we look up, we see those chariots, we see that that is a sign of Yahweh coming, okay? So again, this lesson is going to be titled, The Chariots, A Sign of His Coming. In Lord's Wood, this lesson was edifying. I want to give all praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bahashim, Yahweh Shai, Bahashim, Rakakodash. Double honors to our apostles and elders of Great Millstone. Peace and blessing and many salutations to you, elect Akiam, across the four winds of this earth, pushing this word in sincerity and in truth. Shalom.